Hi everyone, thanks for joining in for the webinar today. Um, we've got a couple more minutes until it's 11, but um, in the meantime, while you are just logging in, just letting you all know that we can't hear you or see you. So um, we know that you're there with the attendees list, but um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please use that Q&A button down the bottom. Just while we're joining in, just um, remember the webinar will be recorded and uploaded to the Talonsville Enterprise website after this. So um, obviously feel free to take notes, but if you miss anything, definitely log on to that website and grab the um, recording later on and I'll upload the screen slides as well. Um, we'll also be sending out a survey at the end of the presentation. So um, just please have a quick five minutes to fill that in and send it back to us just so we know that we're sending you guys the right content and the things that you'll be able to use for your businesses. Um, but yeah, we'll just give it a couple, uh, just one more minute and then we'll kick off. All right, guys, so we might just uh, kick off the presentation. So thank you all for joining again. Really appreciate you tuning in. Um, today, we're going to go through a presentation about Facebook. Um, if you missed our previous one, we have done a Instagram trends presentation, uh, which went through the social media trends on Instagram and things that might help your business. So today we're going to focus on Facebook um, and hoping you can learn something that might be able to um, integrate into your business. So um, that will just kick over now. Um, here are a few of the outcomes that we're going to um, hopefully share with you today. Um, from the start, we've got the top five trends for 2020, um, things that are happening on Facebook with different functions and just general trends with consumers um, and how you might be able to capture those and use them in your business. Um, secondly, the, fe the features on Facebook. So a lot of us are obviously on it every day, but um, there are some features that are just for business use um, and things that you may or may not know and how you can integrate those into your social media plans. Um, and finally, just a few checklists for success, some pointers on how to increase engagement um, and just things to think about when you're building your social media schedule. So as you know, um, the role of social media has definitely taken off during this COVID period. Um, there are two main uses for social media and that's being the commercial use so that's obviously talking to your customers that's been selling things promoting things um, getting someone to take action um, and then secondly there's the community purpose so that's talking with your customer and that's purely about building relationships and um, building a fan base well a one-on-one -on -one engagement um, the other role there is to connect with people virtually, which has never been more important during this period. Obviously, people are starting to transition into being able to move around more freely, but I think the trend on how to connect virtually has, is definitely one that will stay, and people are going to wanting, wanting to maintain that engagement that they've built um, during our lockdown period. And lastly is to build an audience with authentic content to increase your brand loyalty. So this is an important one and hopefully you've been um, staying visible on social media. Um, but we definitely want to keep going with the um, organic content to maintain that business and business to consumer relationship. So now we're just going to go through um, the 
basically the page of Facebook. Um, as I said, a lot of us use it every day of the week, every minute of the day sometimes. Um, but I think it's good to note um, the different sections of the Facebook page, just so you can kind of get familiar with things that you may or may not be using to its full capacity. Um, so obviously at the top there, you've got your profile picture. That's something that you can edit and update all the time. Your profile handle, that's the place where people can tag you and find you using that handle. Um, then down that left hand side, you've got the content tabs. Um, so there's where you've got all your sections of your Facebook page and a click link, quick links to where um, the different parts of your page. Right down the bottom is your ad center. Sometimes this is in a different spot and I had a bit of trouble finding it um, a few weeks ago, but it's um, the spot and it set, takes you to a different page on Facebook as part of the business manager. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, right across the top there are your page tabs. So that's, um, as I said, the sort of different um, click out links of your Facebook page. So the, where your ad center, the inbox of people's messengers, um, your creator studio, which is a new function, um, and where all your notifications go. Um, then you've got your cover picture at the top there. Um, there's definitely capacity there to upload a video as well. And a lot of the time we do have a video running, um, but it's something that you can update if you've got a special campaign or something that's um, sort of got a timeliness to it. Um, then you've got the action button. So this one you can edit and update to have a different action depending on what your page or your business is about. So it can be a message now, a share now, a um, contact us. Uh, so we've got there the book now button just relating to that campaign about buy now, holiday later. Um, further down there's the section about your story. I think this is an important one in terms of building that authentic engagement, um, just to share a bit about who you are as a business and what you're trying to achieve um, through your social media channels. So it's a nice way to sort of connect with people without having a full post on it. It just gives people options to learn a bit about you um, in their own time. And then lastly down there is your page tips. So this is something that Facebook um, just sends to your shares opportunities to increase your um, the effectiveness of your Facebook page. Um, so if you're ever looking for options to kind of get tips on how to um, boost your engagement or anything like that, um, there's always sort of different clicks and help, helpful hints down there at the bottom. Okay, so the next one is about the Facebook metrics. And if you're not on Facebook every day of the week, sometimes the terminology can be a little bit confusing. Um, so here I've just kind of explained what each section or segment of the Facebook metrics are. So the top one there are your fans. So your fans are different to the followers. So fans are the number of people who saw any of your posts at least once and they're grouped by age or gender. So this is an, a great way to um, understand the audience that are following you but may not have actually clicked to follow your page. Um, so that's what those, that next segment there is with your followers. So these are people that have followed your page. So when you've got your total of 33,000 followers, um, they're the people that have either liked or followed your page uh, and they're the, your fully engaged audience. Um, the second, third one down there is people reached. So this is the number of people who have had any content from your page or about your page into their screen. So that's, they've shown interest in your content at some point and it um, is then shown upon their news feed. Um, and then lastly, there is your people engaged. So this is the number of people talking about your page and it's usually grouped by age or gender. Um, so these metrics are helpful when you, to understand how your content is, gets onto people's news feeds. Um, and I'll explain a bit about that later, but it's um, kind of a good, a good place to start in learning about um, those different metrics. All right, so this one um, is about the sort of global trends more than anything. Um, so this one, um, oh, sorry, little polls popping up on my screen too. Um, so uh, yeah, this is just about global trends um, and about who is using for Facebook and how they're using it. Um, obviously a lot of the data is from America, but I think there's a lot of um, 
be a convergence on what we can take away from it in here in Australia. Um, so the top one there, the users of 65, um, 65 years or older are the, actually the fastest growing group on Facebook. So um, it's definitely something to keep in mind in terms of who your audience is and that's something um, we've even seen across the Visit Townsville page is um, our highest engaged group is actually the 55 plus um, demographic. Um, the, the second one there is the highest traffic occurs on midday, Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, as I said, this is a global trend, so it's worth checking your own social media insights um, to understand when your audience is engaged. Um, for instance, our, our audience at Visit Townsville is usually mornings and evenings, um, but it does tend to change depending on what's happening around. Um, and obviously throughout the COVID period, people have had a lot more time to do during the day and uh, typically middle of the week, I think it's just uh, people are looking for something to distract them from the middle of the day of the work um, before they are busy on a weekend. Um, thirdly, the 94% the of Facebook ad revenue is from mobile. So while we're able to upload things on desktop, um, I think it's something to keep in mind is making sure that your content is mobile friendly. And I've got a link there that you can check out on how to actually do that. But most of the sort of tips are that um, consider the size and the sort of shape of your content. So that's making it portrait rather than landscape, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, definitely check out that link. Um, and lastly, users watch 85% of videos without sound. So um, that's something also to keep in mind when you're building video content. It's whether you can use narration through captions um, and it, that's even if there is no formal narration, but whether you can explain the video by putting text across it. Um, and I think one example of that is there's a Mashable app um, and you can update your um, videos to have captions or narration through text on or as an overlay. All right, so now it's going to um, skip over to the actual trends on Facebook. So these are the top five trends we've I've found globally um, for 2020. Um, so the top one here is the more of a shift to private channels. So Facebook globally have actually taken more of a privacy focused vision for social networking. Um, and that's just seeing general increases in the use of Facebook Messenger and Facebook groups. Um, for business application, uh, it's something to consider that this is a great opportunity to um, tap into those Facebook groups and actually have a captive audience on things with the people with a common interest. Um, so I think it was in 2017, um, groups, uh, sorry, private business were actually able to be added to groups. So um, think about how your business can maybe look at options into being added to groups or creating your own groups to build an audience of people with the same interest. Um, the 2020 trend there is the Facebook secret group. So that's something um, where you've got closed and public groups, but there's also a third one now called secret groups. So um, they're a little more obviously difficult to find, but the um, link there will tell you how to sort of find those and whether there's ways to integrate that into your business social media. Um, so the second one there is the group centric redesign. So um, this is all about the functionality of Facebook and the increase in making um, group tabs more visible and more um, optimized. Um, so I think, again, it's just about that option or opportunity to increase your business's um, captive audience through finding group updates and how um, you can access those audiences with common interest. So the third trend there is um, the no more like count. So we did see this with Instagram a little while ago. Um, and obviously there, are, there will be impacts on how those engagement rates for Facebook are calculated. Um, but there are a bunch of other ways that engagement is measured. Um, so I've got that link there for you as well um, to understand sort of another way of measuring how your content is um, working with your audience. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, the fourth trend, and I think we did see um, this as well for Instagram, is the augmented reality and the virtual reality driven formats. So 
um, in something, it's called Spark Studio. So it's a um, sort of a, its own standalone feature for Facebook. You can create ads that have um, an augmented reality feature embedded in it. So it's something obviously that will increase engagement, makes it a bit more creative and fun for users to see on their channel or on their newsfeed. And they're more likely to obviously engage with something that you can interact with. Um, so a few examples there, they've got, um, you can try on your favorite color lipstick by putting the augmented reality filter over. Um, and that obviously links through to the, their shop where you can buy that color lipstick. Um, even just things where you can po poll questions with your audience with different filters over your product, such as there with the um, mac and cheese with your different kind of toppings. Um, so, and there's another option there with um, video poll ads. So I've got another link there as well. Um, and I think this is definitely an opportunity in the space that even visit towns will probably need to sort of step into a little bit more actively um, and in sort of just changing up the kinds of content that we promote. So definitely one that we'll be thinking about and it's one that you can sort of have a play with and be creative on. So finally, uh, the last trend there is the um, more support for small business. So I think this is definitely um, a great opportunity for our region with a lot of small business in Townsville and in throughout North Queensland. Um, so there's been a general increase in the e-commerce and payment tool functions. Um, so that's obviously being able to host your shop, your shop um, and sell product through Facebook. Um, and that also translates into the ad centre or um, in creating automated ads, there's um, booking functions, that sort of thing. Um, so that all those functions there are in that hyperlink. So have a look at those. But um, in terms of the ads, we'll definitely be covering those off in the presentation as well. Um, on top of those five trends, I, def I just do want to include um, some general social media trends as well, just to think about um, when you're building your social me media schedule. So generally, um, people are tending to love more authentic or organic content. So that's the no edit edit, um, basically spending less time editing, more time posting. Um, the, the increase in influencer marketing. So that's where um, the, the rise of the nano influencer comes in. So that basically puts everyone that has a social media um, account, puts them in the forefront of the marketing world. Um, using that word of mouth marketing, um, recommend, a recommend from a friend, that type of style. Um, the longer captions are definitely another one as well. Um, the longer captions, obviously the content needs to be engaging and um, uh, authentic, but the, um, the trend is showing that more people are likely to engage with things like mini blogs or storytelling. So if you've got um, some content, a lot of the time it's best to sort of think about what your story is and what you're trying to promote um, and then finding a nice picture to go with it rather than doing it the other way around. Um, and finally, there, the brand of voice is never been more important. So that's basically just understanding who you are as a business um, and how you can use your social media to share who you are um, giving people an insight into the, sort of how you operate, the people behind the show, um, that sort of obviously builds that authentic engagement and really builds a relationship with the consumer. Okay, next we're going to cover off on some of the features on Facebook. Um, I mentioned earlier that there is an ad centre, so I've got a hyperlink in there, um, which will sort of give you a bit more of a rundown on how to use the ad centre and some tips and tricks. Um, but primarily the ad center is a place where you can create and manage the ads on your mobile or desktop. Um, so that's where you can create ad campaigns, campaigns, review and adjust them, monitor them in real time, um, get reporting on whether the engagement and the type of content's worked um, and the value that you've assigned to those ads and how far it's managed to get the reach. Um, so, as I mentioned, the trend there with the video polls and the AR filters, it's definitely a place where you can get a bit more creative with the ads. It doesn't have to be just a static photo and a caption with a link to buy now. Um, yeah, so just think about the way that your audience engages with your social media, the types of people that you are um, talking to and the way that they like to consume their media. Um, but have a play in the ad centre. It's, um, it's fairly easy. It's like building an, any other social media post. 
but you can go down into segmenting where that ad will be shown um, to understand sort of who your customers are. So they can segment them by their age, by their demographic, by their region. Um, it even goes to the level of whether they're interested in certain things like travel or um, holiday. Um, so you can spend a lot of time just really creating an audience for individual campaigns. Um, and it's something that we're obviously having to tinker with at the moment, given the restrictions on travel. Um, obviously you don't want to be sending an ad to someone overseas when they can't come yet, but that's where the dreaming content is still important. But when you're trying to build an action on something for an ad, it's definitely worth your time in spending a, um, spending a bit of time in creating that audience and getting that bit right. Um, so the next time, next uh, feature on Facebook here is the Creator Studio. So this one's only relatively new and they've updated it. Um, it's almost like a back of house uh, content creation stage. So instead of posting directly to Facebook, you can go into the Creator Studio um, and create your content from there where you can obviously view the content as it's posted to build um, that in, to understand those insights on engagement and reach. Um, but you can also schedule your post, um, build a cross-platform post, so where you can share content from other channels with that um, agreement in place. Um, so it's definitely, it's a place where you can probably, if you, as I recommend, sit down for your 30 minutes a week to plan the week of social media, you can sit and do all of that in your creative studio. Um, and they've got functions there to edit your photos and videos as well. Okay, lastly here is um, the final features that I've highlighted. So there's Facebook stories, um, very similar to Instagram stories. You can even cross, cross post between the two. So you, um, if you're doing one on Instagram stories, it can post automatically across to your Facebook as well. Um, so that content's live for 24 hours. Um, it's a great way to sort of extend your content, give it um, a different twist. So you, have, you can have the standard post running on your social media but do a different sort of quirky take on it for your Instagram story or Facebook story. Um, the second one is there is likes. So as I said before, they're likely to um, remove that from the, uh, from the platform, but um, at the moment it ties, so the algorithm ties organic reach to how your fans are engaged with the posts. So that basically means the more likes and shares that you get on your post is the more likely fans will see your future posts. So um, trying to build and understand who your audience is to basically increase those shares and likes will put your content on more channels um, across that fan base before they become followers. Um, hashtags is another one. Obviously hashtags run across Instagram, Facebook and other, most other channels you see people using hashtags. Um, but on Facebook they've actually become a clickable link. So um, that shows that's another way of people to sort of search things by common interests or um, another way to basically curate content. So for example, Towns of North Queensland, um, all our social channels use hashtag Townsville Shines. Um, and obviously that, if people were to click on that link on one of our posts, all posts that use that hashtag would then come up through that search. Um, so it's a great one to sort of boost engagement, build that um, user audience to find yeah, people with the common interest looking for that sort of same content to build, put your um, content amongst things with similar um, similar interests. So don't be shy using a hashtag. I think some people go a little bit berserk on them sometimes, but um, I definitely recommend doing one standard for your business that you would use on all posts just to build that um, standard organic um, engagement. But um, yeah, something to consider with your, your posting as well. Uh, and lastly, there is the insights. So this is a function on Facebook and I think it's really important to check in on it fairly regularly, um, just so you can monitor the performance of your page and understand who is, work, um, who is checking in on your business or through social media. Um, but it also kind of gives you an idea on what posts are working and what content is working. Um, we try to review that at least once a week, just to sort of understand the week previous, how it's trended, um, whether there's been any sort of things that have really worked um, that we need to keep doing more of. And if there's things that's, that haven't really hit the mark. Um, so a lot of it can be trial and error at times, but the insights page is a great place to sort of see where things are going. All right, so this one here is just 
a bit of a checklist for everyone. Um, and it's just 10 ways to boost your Facebook engagement. So as I said, um, the more engagement you have, the more likely that reach will extend to people in your fan base to build your following. So um, these are some good tips to sort of think about when you're building your social media channels and your, um, your content for the week. Um, so firstly, show your personality. Be organic, be authentic. Um, people wanna know who you are rather than who a business um, face might be. So think about how you can sort of show off the people behind the business, um, give yourself a bit of a brand personality. So at Visit Townsville Australia, we like to keep our content fairly conversational, fairly um, friendly and engaging um, by using sort of we and us instead of I and you. Um, so that's, yeah, I think that's really important. Uh, secondly, ask questions. So a way to get engagement is to request that someone take some form of action. Um, we like the fill in the blank posts. So for example, if you could travel anywhere in Townsville, North Queensland, I would go to, and then you leave a blank. Um, so that gets people to comment in your post, which is increasing your engagement. Um, use images. So make sure it's aligned to what you want to say. So as I said before, um, a lot of the times it's best to think about what you're trying to say, what your story is, whether it's a mini blog um, or just a nice long post. Um, think about what you want to say and use an image that would suit that. Um, provide an inside look at your company. So those behind the scenes get to know you. Um, as I said, that's building your brand personality and showing um, who you are as a business. Um, very good at in building your brand loyalty and that can, um, consumer to business relationship. Um, stay specific. So monitor your posts um, and when your uh, high traffic periods are, that's just something to think about through that insights section on Facebook to really kind of pinpoint what works best and when. Uh, use your fans content when, and using obviously credit when the credit is due. So at Visit Townsville, we like to, um, Visit Townsville Australia, we like to use a lot of uh, user generated content. So we um, search using our Townsville Shines hashtag and we, um, if we find a photo that we think is really great, um, great quality, we send them a request that we can use that on our social media. Um, and if they approve, we've definitely, um, we put that up on our socials and we give them credit using their social media handle, whether it's Instagram or Facebook. Um, but it's a great way. People love seeing their own stuff on new channels. So um, that's a definitely a great way to boost engagement build, um, and maybe capture a new audience with their own following. Um, keep posts simple and understand what works for your audience. So that's fairly self-explanatory. Um, yeah, understand what is uh, someone that follows you, what they like to consume and how they like to consume it, whether it's pictures, um, images, video, that sort of thing. Um, be persistent. So only po um, post useful content and often. Um, so be a consistent voice. So never has that been more important during this COVID period. Um, a constant presence will keep your brand share of voice in market. And it's something that um, will be ever more <laughs> relevant moving throughout these stages into recovery. Um, love your followers. So that's about building a relationship and showing recognition. So if someone's left a nice kind message on your Facebook page, share it so the rest of um, the people that view your page can see it. Um, or even if you've seen someone tag you in something or um, of, of having nice words or have sent a review somewhere, um, feel free to share it and give them recognition for it. So it just shows that you um, appreciate kind words and um, they're more likely to obviously share that with someone else in their own um, immediate circle. And lastly there is have fun and get creative. Uh, social media is a fun way of into, um, speaking to people. Um, so don't be shy trying out the new functions, uh, be a bit quirky, um, Google things that um, like I find if we're sort of stuck for ideas for the week, I always just uh, Google whether there's something happening, whether it's a world turtle day and we think of trying to embed our content around that. Um, um, it's all about just having a bit of fun with it. Um, so. There are a heap of resources available for Facebook. So there's, um, Facebook actually put out some free actual training in through, through courses that is available through their business account page. Um, so if I clicked it there, it's called Blue, uh, Facebook Blueprint. Um, and there are 
so many courses you can do. A lot of them are only maybe 15 to half an hour, um, 15 minutes to half an hour. So it's definitely, if you've got a bit of time up your sleeve or you're looking to really um, ramp up your social media, I think this is a great place to start. Um, and obviously there's something for everyone on there. There's things on how to run ads, um, building your business on Instagram as well as Facebook. Um, there's all those commerce, um, e-commerce tools. There's a whole section on that as well. Um, so definitely check that one out as well. And I just want to wrap up with a social media checklist. So um, these are just some things to think about when you're sitting down to plan your social media and um, sort of looking for places to start. So obviously you should start by developing a social media strategy. So that's by sitting down and working out what direction you're trying to take social media, why you're using it, what you're trying to say. Um, so that link there, it's a bit of a, I think it's an eight step tip um, on things to think about for your strategy. Uh, secondly, there is to update and create your brand tone of voice guidelines. So that's, like I said, is understanding who you are as a business, developing your brand personality and um, sort of tips on how you're going to speak with your audience, the kind of words that you use, the vernacular. Um, it's a, just a great way to sort of build sort of consistency across your platforms. And it helps if you've got multiple people, multiple people using your social media, as we do here at um, Townsville Enterprise. So um, it's definitely a good one to, to include in your social media um, strategy. Um, invest time in your social media. So whether that's by taking short courses, uh, like the Facebook blueprint ones I mentioned, or um, our team here have actually pulled together a whole heap of resources in our marketing masterclass, which is a blog on the Townsville Enterprise Business Assist Hub. Um, it's a great spot to check out if you've got an hour free. Um, yeah, maybe book in some time to up some skills on social media. And as I've been sort of saying throughout this whole presentation, take time to plan your content. So we try and sort of plan most of our content for the week uh, leading in. So we'll sort of sit down and actually spend time writing content um, all at once on our desktops rather than post by post. I think a lot of the time, if you're in the writing headspace, um, you kind of, you think of really creative and um, engaging ways to just build content. And I think it's something, um, yeah, it should be really part of your social media strategy. But that is the end of the presentation, guys. So um, if you do have any questions, feel free to send them through to that Q&A um, spot down the bottom. Um, but as I said, the whole recording will be uploaded to the Towns Lunch Prize website. And we will be sending around a survey at the end um, just to people that have registered, just to kind of get an idea on whether the content you've received has hit the mark and if there's anything that we can do to um, consider, continue helping your business throughout this period. So thank you, I'll um, wait to see if any questions come through. Oh, thanks, Crystal, appreciate that feedback. Um, yes, as I said, the uh, links are all there on our social media um, through sorry, the Townsville Enterprise page. So, but um, if you head to the Business Assist Hub on the Townsville Enterprise homepage, um, all of the webinars across all of our sort of departments are all on there. Um, can we be certain Facebook will be around for a while? I'll need to know before investing quality time. Okay, so yeah, Facebook is actually the leading social media platform. So while there are other things like Instagram, TikTok, um, yeah, Twitter, any kind of social media you can sort of pull out of a hat, Facebook still has the largest following. I think um, the numbers I read across the globe, it's some staggering figure like 126 billion people or some million people, sorry. So it's it's definitely the big daddy of social media and it's definitely one if you're going to start with social media somewhere facebook's the place to start okay guys if there's uh, no other questions um yeah feel free to uh follow me up i'm happy to answer any questions outside of this forum um my email is definitely on the towns enterprise website um, but yeah, feel free to shoot me a question, but check out the post afterwards. But um, yeah, thank you all for joining.